today we're going to be delving into what some might deem to be a little bit beyond the realm of DIYable. And, and I'll get into why that is and why I feel the injectors specifically are more DIYable than anything else. The pump itself is very simplistic. Really the only thing that, that goes bad in them that can be fixed is if you have uh, bad seals. If you have bad O-rings, um, you know, lip seals, stuff like that. If any of that goes bad, that's, that's pretty easy to change. But if you have anything like any of the check ball seats that are worn, if the pistons are worn uh, so that they're not, not creating a perfect seal anymore, if any of that stuff is happening, then that pump, as far as us at a consumer level is concerned, is junk. We need to get a rebuilt pump, a new pump. Uh, we don't have any hope of being able to save that because it actually involves resurfacing the check ball seats and such, which at least I don't have any of the equipment to be able to do. But when it comes to the injectors... Uh, one of the main mechanical components that actually can be changed is the nozzle. And as long as your fuel system has been well maintained and you have clean fuel all the time running through the injectors, the injectors themselves, as far as the multiplier valve uh, and the, the ball seat on the top of the multiplier valve, the solenoid, all those components are going to last a very long time. The one component that won't, however, because it's subject to the most wear, is the nozzle. Now, the nozzle is one of the only parts in the injector that's actually available to the general public. Uh, and I'll leave a, a description down there for the OM646, 47, and 48 injectors. And it's not terribly hard to change. So the purpose of this video is I'm going to go from start to finish, pulling the injector to putting it back in, rebuilding the injector to the best that we can as DIYers. Now, when taking the nozzle holder off of the injector, it's going to be very, very tight. So just keep that in mind and prepare for it. Uh, the best way, however, for getting the nozzle holder off without ruining any other part of the injector and getting the most leverage on it is going to be to grab a hold of the flats of the injector where the hold down clamp inserts into. Grab a hold of that with a nice big crescent wrench. Tighten the jaws of the crescent wrench around down those flats and then tighten the crescent wrench itself into a vise. That's going to allow you to get a really good purchase on the injector body, and then you can focus on, uh, on the nozzle. So for the nozzle end, we use a 16 millimeter deep well six point socket. Do not use any other socket. These nozzle holders are so tight, the only thing that works well without marring up the holder at all is a deep well 16 millimeter socket. If you try using a box end wrench, a 12 point socket, anything like that to try and get a hold of it, you run the risk of... Uh, of marring up and possibly stripping the, the ends of the nozzle holder. I've already actually changed all the nozzles on all these injectors already, probably about six months ago. Um, but due to the fact that I don't think I lapped the, the body of the injector correctly, uh, all of the injectors leak around the nozzle holder very slightly. Not, not a whole lot of fuel leaks, but just a little bit. And I want to fix that. So in the process of relapping these injectors, I figured I'd shoot a video and show you guys how it's done. All right, when removing the injectors, there's a specific routine uh, that I like to go by when removing these things uh, as far as a step-by-step -step procedure. Um, and first things first is to remove all of the debris, or in my case, liquid, that is sitting around the injector so that when we actually pull it out, uh, we have the littlest risk of any debris or liquids falling down into the cylinder. I like to cover around the injector as much as possible with a cloth to prevent any uh, spray from going anywhere else on the engine. All right, looks like we got everything pretty well cleared out of there. Next step is to loosen the main bolt here. I'm just gonna loosen slightly, but I'm not gonna remove all the way yet. Next step is to loosen, but not remove the main fuel line here. Uh, it is a 14 millimeter box end wrench. I'm actually gonna be using a crow's foot wrench uh, because it gets a better grab on this nut and uh, distorts it less. As you can see, that's now loose enough uh, to allow a little bit of movement, but not loose enough to let any debris into the fuel system. Go ahead and remove the main connector. There's a push lock right here. You push down here, and then the front part will lift up. 
allowing you to slip that right off. I'm going to slip it under here to keep it out of the way if it'll let me. Next step is to remove the clasp for the return line fitting. This little bugger right here. Keep a good eye on these things because if you lose them, you're screwed. These fittings should pop right off, but if not, don't be afraid to carefully pry underneath them with some needle nose pliers or a screwdriver. Just be careful not to damage the hose here. Okay, that one's off. I'll set it over here. You don't need to be as concerned about uh, getting any, any contaminants into the return line fittings here because these ultimately end up back in the return line and then end up back in the tank and then going through the filter again before they enter the fuel system. We'll remove this bolt the rest of the way here. And that bolt is really hot because this engine was just running so I'm going to go ahead and remove it with needle nose. We'll go ahead and uh, remove this end of the fuel line. I don't remove this fuel line fully, I just remove the end from the injector. And then I'll loosen this end over here and swing it around. I'll usually leave it right about here. That uh, prevents any fuel contamination from entering the rail here. Now, if these injectors are not stuck, meaning there's no black death and they've been removed sometime previously, they should just pull right out like mine does here. It'll just twist and pull straight up, just like that. If not, if this injector has black death on it or something else, you're going to have a lot more work to do. And I would suggest before removing any of this stuff, uh, follow another guide that I'm going to link down in the description. It's by a guy named Alex. YouTube channel is Legit Streetcars. Uh, the dude has a great channel, and he just went through the exact same issue that you would be facing here with black death. Uh, probably a pretty extreme case of it too and uh, he went through step by step on a great tutorial on how to remove injectors of black death so i'll go ahead and link that in the description go ahead and watch that uh, my only tip for removing injectors of black death is to get the engine nice and hot and uh, soak the whole area with carb cleaner in there several times throughout several days that will loosen up the carbon around there and then you can pry through the hole here in the hold down clamp pry backwards and it will it will lever on the bottom of the ball right there and pull the injector straight up. The reason why I say to pry there is because the head is reinforced where that ball seat is. Um, and so you can pry as much down on, you, on that as you want without uh, damaging the either the head or the cam cover. Do not pry against this cam cover. It is very, very, very thin aluminum. And I'm not exaggerating. I've had this off of this car. It's extremely thin. After the injector's out of the car, uh, one quick note before we move on to disassembly. Make sure that you're plugging off the inlet for the injector, the threaded adapter on the end of the injector. To do that, I've made a simple tool, a simple plug-off device. that I, It's basically just a piece of vinyl tubing. And you heat up one end and mold it over the threads. And then heat up the other end to where it's melting. And squeeze it with a pair of pliers. Uh, that perfectly seals it off and it prevents any debris or, or liquids or anything from getting into the uh, inlet side of the injector. Here is the setup essentially for removing the nozzle holder. You've got, like I said, you got your vise, crescent wrench, jaws tightened down uh, from the crescent wrench on the slits where the, uh, where the hold down clamp for the injector goes. Tighten down on that nice and tight. And then you're really going to need to beef on this. Um, these may not be as tight as they were from the factory because I've had them off before, like I said, about six months ago, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh man, okay. It's loosened. That's good. That's a good first step. So you don't want to take this off all the way. I'm going to show you the proper way to remove the nozzle holder because you don't want all the parts falling all over the place. So I'll, I'll go over how to remove that here next. As I said earlier, the extent of rebuilding one of these injectors, rebuilding in a do-it-yourself type sense, uh, only covers changing the nozzle. Like I said, there's essentially no point in changing anything up here by the solenoid end because you can't get any of the parts, number one. And number two, if the ball seat in this injector wears at all, the whole thing is shot because it'll leak off excessively um, and uh, it just will not perform right. So when removing the nozzle, you want the injector standing straight up. 
We've already loosened it, but we haven't taken the nozzle holder off. So we'll go ahead and twist this off. Very fine thread pitch here, you'll notice. Once that's off, we'll lift straight up carefully, making sure not to pull the nozzle with the holder. Holding this nozzle in position is two little pins on either side. So we'll pull the nozzle, and you want to kind of tilt it slightly at an angle in order to make sure that the pin on the inside does not come out with the injector. So we have the injector nozzle here and then the pin on the inside right there. Do not remove that pin whatever you do. Never remove it. The chance of any contaminants getting on that pin uh, will essentially ruin your nozzle. It'll take a while, it'll wear them down, probably take 10, 20,000 miles, but it will wear that nozzle out having any contaminants in there. Also a tip, you should be wearing gloves, so let me go put some gloves on. Working on an open fuel system is just as important, if not more important, uh, keeping it clean than working on a transmission, uh, inside a transmission or something like that. Keeping it surgically clean is really, really important, so make sure you do that. Next part we have here is a little spacer and inside this spacer there should be a shim and so you'll see if I remove my glove there is a shim right there be very careful with that it needs to go back inside of here so what I do is I usually wipe this shim off on the inside and I'll just leave it in there if you can it's sticking to my glove because diesel feels a little sticky. See it's in there? I'm just going to leave it in there and put it in a safe place. Next thing to remove is these two pins. You got one pin here, one pin on the other side. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our finger, put it over the end of the injector, and tip it over. We're then going to let everything on the inside fall out kind of on an angle. Okay, that's everything. You've got a spacer right here, little metal spacer, and then you have a spring. So we need to make sure all these parts go back in the same order. Um, I'm documenting it now, so if you're, if you're following along this guide with me, uh, you'll know the correct order to put it back together. Um, it's, it's never a bad idea when doing any kind of complicated repair work to videotape it just as I'm doing here so that you can always review your disassembly footage uh, to make sure you're putting everything back together in the correct order. The surfaces we're going to be lapping are going to be these two right here. The bottom of your injector, nozzle that is, and then right here, that surface right there. Those two surfaces mate together they are both incredibly, incredibly hard steel. Very, very hard steel. And there is no type of gasket or anything. It is just a metal on metal connection and that is expected to seal. So they both need to be incredibly flat and incredibly smooth. This is the definition of a file finish. Alright, I'm ready to go ahead and start lapping, but one thing that I think is, is it's not mandatory, but it definitely, definitely helps in cleaning and making sure everything is 100% spotless when, uh, when rebuilding these injectors, is a little ultrasonic cleaner. Now, you can get cheap, you know, $20 ones off of Amazon that are plastic, fill them with diesel fuel, do whatever. That works really good, actually. Um, it has a stainless steel tank, most of those on there, and then they have a plastic housing. This ultrasonic cleaner I got off of eBay, and this thing is all stainless steel, the whole frame of it. It has a heater built in, um, and the controls are a little more customizable. It's really nice. It heated this, this uh, area up here in probably five, six minutes. Um, it holds, looks like four or five cups of liquid. Uh, it's made for doing small things. But this is absolutely fantastic for cleaning the nozzle holder and the nozzle itself. The nozzle itself, you do not want to get this end in solution. Any contaminants, microscopic even, that get into here will screw this nozzle up. So what I'll do is I will only dip into solution down to about here uh, just to dip this in there. And it'll, it'll, the ultrasonic action will lift and free away a lot of the uh, contaminants that are on here. It won't relieve all of it, but just enough to make it clean enough to put back together. 
What I've done in this ultrasonic cleaner to make sure that the solution stays clean is I've taken a coffee filter and set it in there and then any of the parts that I'm going to be cleaning that are not the nozzle and not the injector body um, I put in this filter to make sure that the rest of the solution around it is still clean. So all the contaminants that wash off of the uh, injector nozzle holder and nozzle, the end of the nozzle that I just showed you, will stay in the coffee filter. The next step is going to be lapping. A couple tools that you're going to need for this, not necessarily tools, but uh, uh, pieces that you're going to need. A sheet of glass and a very flat surface. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but flat enough to make sure that the glass is not rocking back and forth on it. Glass is just about the smoothest thing you can get, short of uh, you know machinist flat tables and stuff like that, uh, in order to make sure that you're lapping on a perfectly flat surface. So I'm using a sheet of glass. We've wet the glass and the uh, sheet of, of sandpaper here. This is uh, 1,000 grit sandpaper. I think the mistake I made when I lapped these last time is I started with 2,500 grit. I started with 2,500 grit and then I went to 3,000 and I just don't think that's necessary. Uh, and I don't think it digs in deep enough to get a good flat lapping on it. So I'm starting with 1,000 grit, we're wet down with diesel fuel, they'll go ahead and start lapping that now. You're going to do a circular motion, making sure to keep it flat. Do a circular motion around that paper, just like that. Now with a thousand grit, you're not going to do it a ton because you don't want to wear that nozzle down too much. So just keep going in circles. Make sure not to rock this up on either end because that will create flat spots on the edges, which will create weaknesses in the seals. After a while, you'll start to notice some metallic uh, junk picking up on the paper from the, from the nozzle. That's good. Move to a different spot on the, uh, on the paper here. I think that's good for the 1,000 grit. So we're going to go ahead and put the nozzle on a clean piece of paper or uh, cloth and go ahead and work on the injector body now. So we're going to be lapping this surface right here. Um, do not worry about getting the end of this rod here. That will stick out and it will touch the paper. That's fine. If it wears a tiny bit off of that, that's fine. The mechanism in this injector that actually moves and actuates the nozzle uh, is hydraulically controlled and it essentially self-adjusts for wear. There's much less surface area on the body of the injector that needs to be lapped. And it's also much harder to work smoothly back and forth on the paper. It's very difficult to do in circles. So what I do is I'll actually spin the injector. I'll take it and I'll spin it just like this. And I will occasionally go back and forth on the paper like this, mixing in with some spins. Like I said, because of the uh, less amount of surface area on the body of the injector, we're not going to spend as much time lapping as we did on the nozzle. Go ahead and put that on our clean sheet of towel or paper. And we'll get rid of this 1000 grit. I'm going to move from 1000 grit on to 1500 grit. While you're doing this lapping, uh, you know, it's a good idea to have your ultrasonic cleaner on and cleaning the nozzle holder. We're going to call that good for 1500 grit on the body and you can see that surface is very smooth. We're getting there at least. Go ahead and move on to the nozzle. Now when you get these nozzles new, you should not have to lap them. At least, you know, that's what they say. You're not supposed to have to lap them. Um, but I am because this has been seated to the uh, body of that injector for several thousand miles. The bottom of this nozzle was discolored, so we can see from our lapping job, we can see that this is nice and cleaned up. We're going to move on now to 2000 grit.
The further you work up in paper grit, the less resistance you're gonna have on the paper, which will make it a little bit easier for the piece that you're lapping to slide. And we'll move on to 2500 grit. Now, I said earlier we were gonna go to 3000 grit. I thought this paper was 3000 grit. It's actually 2500. Um, you can, if you can find 3000, go for it. Do not use the sanding pads. The give and the pads will not, uh, will not create a flat surface for you to sand on. All we're attempting to do here is just give it a finished polish, which will uh, it'll sand down any of the imperfections in the top of the metal and help create a better seal. Let's get a look at that here. Clean it off. That actually looks really, really good. That surface looks good, nice and polished up. Now the next step is we're going to clean the body and the nozzle, all the little metallic dust we just created from the lapping. Uh, we're gonna start with the body. You're gonna take your coffee filter here um, and you're gonna set it down into the solution so that all the solution coming into the coffee filter has been filtered. So push it down in there, let all that fluid come in. And the first thing we're going to put in there is the body. You can do it in any order you want. I'm just choosing to do it this way. Start up your ultrasonic cleaner. And I'm just going to stick the body, the end of the body in there, uh, the threads and all. And just kind of wiggle it around in there, let the ultrasonic action do its thing, and let it pull all that metallic dust off of the body of the injector. And we're going to do the same thing to the nozzle. A little bit different from the nozzle. We're not going to tip it all the way upside down because you don't want this needle in here to come out. We're going to tip it on an angle. Just put it in there horizontal just like this. Okay, we've got a clean rag here for reassembly. Again, I cannot stress to you how important cleanliness is. Keep all these parts clean to prevent future headaches. First thing we're going to do is we're going to raise the injector back up just the way we took everything off. And we're going to drop this circular shim piece, like a donut, it's going to go over the rod in the center, and then we're going to put the spring in there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this tube, but we need to be careful with this tube because remember when we took it apart, there was that little shim on the inside. Look through that shim and make sure that that, or look through that tube and make sure that shim's still there. It is, we're gonna drop it straight down. I'm gonna move this on kind of an angle, make sure that shim doesn't fall out. Right in there. Also this tube, it has a machined groove on one end, you'll notice, that the, not, that the, the needle for the nozzle fits right into. So make sure that that is in the correct position. The cutout here on the end of that tube needs to be on the end facing out. We're then going to put our two pins in that align the nozzle. This is kind of hard to do with gloves, but it is necessary. Come on. Could probably use some medical hemostats for this as well. All right, so next step is the nozzle. You want to make sure that the hole right there is lined up with the bottom hole on the nozzle right there. That is actually the fuel delivery. It comes all the way from down here and goes all the way up to the end and out into the nozzle. So we're going to tip this on an angle to make sure that that needle doesn't fall out. And we're just going to set this right on there and make sure it is seated down just like that. It won't go down all the way because there's actually a little bit of spring pressure there, you'll see. Um, that is tightened down when the nozzle holder is put on. So we'll put that back straight up Put your nozzle holder back down, and then twist it through the 7,000 threads that's required before it's tight. We're going to tighten this down until you can't tighten it anymore by hand. And then we're going to go tighten it back on the crescent wrench in the vise. I have not been able to find an actual torque spec for these nozzles. I've browsed several other forum sites uh, to try and find torque specs for, like, um, uh, you know, Power Strokes and, and Cummins and Duramax 
that use uh, common rail injectors such as this. And I found anything from 35 to 50 foot pounds of torque. Um, I tightened it to 50 foot pounds and I went a little bit further than that to what just felt good. When I talked to a Bosch Reman facility several months ago when I originally rebuilt these injectors and got their input on it, uh, when I asked him a torque spec, he just said, tight. Just looked at me straight in the eye and he said, tight. And so that's basically what it is. These things are so hardened that once these threads, once this thing is tight, it's tight and you really can't turn it anymore. So, I mean, don't use a, a five foot breaker bar trying to tighten this thing, but you know, you got a foot long, foot long ratchet or, or breaker bar, tighten this thing pretty darn tight um, and you won't, be, you won't be upset with it. So this thing is done. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall it now. Using air pressure, just as we did earlier, we're gonna blow out both the cylinder and the threads. So we're gonna stick this down into the cylinder hole, or if you have a long, uh, long nozzle on your blowgun like I do, stick it right down into the cylinder, blow out any debris or liquids or anything that could have gotten in there. That's pretty clean. Blow out the uh, threads here as well. Uh, I'm gonna take a rag with either lacquer thinner or paint thinner, mineral spirits, something to just clean around here and get it nice and tidied up. And especially the seal surface down there in the head. I don't use any super special tools to do the cleaning uh, on these cars. I just use one of these little grabber tools. You can buy these pretty much at any home improvement store. Um, I open it up and I'll just put a, put a rag in there. get it centered. And then I'll just dip the rag in some, uh, in some carb cleaner, mineral spirits, something of that nature in order to get the carbon out of there. I'm going to go first down into the cylinder board just to clean that. I've got mineral spirits on here right now. I'm just going to swab that up and down all the way down to the base and just spinning it as we go. And that will clean the side walls of the cylinders or clean the side wall of the bore for the injector. And I got a little bit of gunk in there. I don't expect this to be really dirty because I had diesel fuel sitting and bubbling in there uh, for several thousand miles. We're gonna use air to do one last blow off in this area to make sure that any of the cleaning solutions that we used uh, did not get down into the cylinder or the bolt threads. So we'll go ahead and uh, Torque spec for the injector bolts is seven Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees of rotation. The, the actual torque spec is two 90 degree uh, rotations after seven Newton meters, but uh, several of the sprinter techs have found that that is actually too much and you run the risk of either stripping the head or um, breaking the bolt. So we'll go ahead and torque this down. That's seven Newton meters right there. Not a whole heck of a lot. And then we're going to do an additional 90 degrees. I'm going to do a little less on this bolt than all the other ones because this one is, like I said, not OEM. It has been replaced. Once that's done, you can pull off your protective cover over the inlet for the fuel. I save these things because I actually use them quite frequently. Go ahead and put this injector line back on here. Seat your connector back on here. Return line fitting back in. And then use your uh, return line clasp. Snap it back in. And make sure it's in the little recesses on the side of the injector. When you're going to work on this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Make sure they're seated in there proper and that it's not too loose. And that's it.
you're done at this point. Uh, you've just successfully rebuilt an OM648 injector, um, at least the nozzle portion, which as I've stated many times, is the only part you can actually rebuild. <laughs> If you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. Uh, I've got a lot more content coming out on all these cars, so subscribe, hit the notification bell. It'll let you know every single time I upload a new video. But that's it, guys. Happy DIYing.